Hello, I'm Rory from Geometrix, and this week we're going to be looking at lean thinking and how it can be applied to gyms. Lean thinking has been around since the 1980s and grown into a global movement and used by some of the world's most respected companies. It is not a cost-cutting exercise as some may think, but rather a way of stripping out all of the non-value add resources from a business and rather focusing all of the resources on what will be adding value for customers. There are five steps to the lean cycle. The first step is to identify value from the customer's perspective. The second step is to map the value stream. So this is all the different steps in the customer's journey through your establishment that are adding value to them. The next step is to create flow. It's very important that the customer can flow through the value stream. As soon as they stop being able to flow, they stop being able to get value. The next step is to create pull. So this is the customers themselves pulling the resources into the gym that enable them to flow through their value stream. And the next step is to seek perfection. It's a cycle, so it starts from the beginning and goes round and round and round. Step one of the process, identify value. We do this in a number of ways. The first way is just looking at total time spent on equipment. We ask operators to imagine that they are a pay-as-you-use gym where they're getting paid one pound per hour used. In this model, operators would be very responsive to their customers' demand. They'd be very quick to get in the equipment that's getting used a lot and is adding a lot of value, but at the same time, they'd be very quick to pull the kit off the gym floor that's not getting used and not adding value. Specifically, we look for equipment that's not being used for at least 10 hours in a week. We're not necessarily saying remove this equipment, but certainly this equipment is not adding value. And questions should be asked whether it should be removed or should induction programs start to get it to add value to customers. We also identify value through the surveys in terms of what equipment the customers value the most. The next step in the process is to map the value stream. So we take all the positive and negative comments that the customers left and lay them out in terms of the customer's journey. So does the location add value? Is it close to work? Can they get into the gym easily or have they got a queue at the turnstiles? When they're on the gym floor, can they easily flow from one piece of equipment that adds value to the next, to the next? Is there a, a pec deck available? Are there mats available? Once they've finished their workout, can they easily get a shower? These are all of the steps in the customer's value stream that are adding value to them. The next part of the process is to create flow. It's very important for the customer to be able to flow through all of the different steps that are adding value to them. As soon as they stop being able to flow, they fundamentally stop being able to access value. Flow can be not being able to get a car parking space, not being able to get a locker. We are most interested in flow on the gym floor. So customers not being able to get on their next piece of equipment stops them accessing value from the gym and they can get very frustrated by this. We can analyze where there's impediments to flow in a number of ways. The most obvious way is through our heat maps. This enables us to see the gym at different times of the day and where there's big red dots, this is where the equipment has very high usage, very low levels of availability and customers fundamentally can't get onto that equipment, i.e. they can't flow through their workout. We also have another way of looking at where there's impediments to flow, from the surveys, where customers can respond, the equipment's usually busy and it bothers me. We analyze these responses to see where the customers are telling us that their flow is being impeded. Step four of the process is to establish customer pull. This is where the customers pull resources into the system that enable them to keep flowing through their value stream. For gym equipment, when availability gets very low, there's a very strong customer pull for more of this equipment. Customers want more of this equipment on the gym floor so they can keep flowing through their workout. Where availability is high, there's a very low pull for this equipment i.e. customers really don't care whether the equipment's there or not and the operator is simply wasting resources by providing it. Waste in equipment comes in two forms. One, when there's simply too much of a single equipment type. The analogy that we use here is it's like adding empty lanes to a highway that doesn't need it. Or you're buying single pieces of equipment that are unpopular. 
Using the same analogy, this is like building a road where no one wants to go. In both of these instances, gyms can save a lot of money not providing this equipment and it making no difference to the value that the customers get from the gym. One of the big advantages of having data is that we can precisely calculate how much equipment is required to enable customers to flow around the gym floor when there's shortages. And at the same time, we can precisely quantify where there's no pull and how much equipment can be removed from the gym floor. In this way, many of our customers are able to provide more value to their customers whilst at the same time spending less on equipment. The final step is to seek perfection and we just keep going around the cycle until we have perfect value creation with no waste in the gym. I hope you have found this interesting and informative. Thank you.